Hi everybody, thank you for coming. My topic is coaching to access alternate realities or gremlins really real. I've got a lot, a lot of ground to cover, a little bit of time to do it, so I'm going to have to move fast. However, I know that's not a problem because every one of you is a genius. You're all just as smart as Albert Einstein, Emmanuel Velikovsky, Nikola Tesla, and Stephen Hawking all rolled into one. So here we go. Those who danced were thought to be quite insane by those who could not hear the music. That's been the story of my life. I've always been dancing to music that no one else hears, and they think I'm crazy. But that's their problem, it's not my problem. As they say, what you think of me is none of my business. It would have four board games running on my computer. I do this to illustrate the possibility we may have alternate lives running simultaneously. Quantum physics tells us that this world is an illusion. There's no such thing as time, or as David Icke puts it, uh, life is like a DVD movie. The beginning, the middle, and the end are all present on the disc. It's the only way we put our focus that becomes our reality. So I focus on one game, in this case Mahjong, or in this case Eddie Safransky. Eddie Safransky is my reality, but I might have other realities running in the background, just like those other games are still running on my computer. So I'm, I'm not asking you to believe anything I say. All I'm asking is to keep an open mind. You can those who danced were thought to be quite insane by those who could not hear the music. That's been the story of my life. I've always been dancing to music that no one else hears, and they think I'm crazy. But that's their problem, it's not my problem. As they say, what you think of me is none of my business. We've got four board games running on my computer. I do this to illustrate the possibility we may have alternate lives running simultaneously. Quantum physics tells us that this world is an illusion. There's no such thing as time. Or as David Icke puts it, uh, life is like a DVD movie. The beginning, the middle, and the end are all present on the disc. It's the only way we put our focus that becomes our reality. So I focus on one game, in this case Mahjong, or in this case Eddie Safransky. Eddie Safransky is my reality, but I might have other realities running in the background, just like those other games. I'm not asking you to believe anything I say. All I'm asking is to keep an open mind. You can, information I give you, you can take it, you can leave it, you can throw it away, do whatever you want. I'm just giving you information. I'm not asking you to believe it. It's up to you. Here we have the, uh, the light spectrum of the universe, or the the energy spectrum of the universe. This universe is a hologram, science is telling us more and more. And consequently, there's no such thing as solid matter. This table is not solid, neither is my hand. I forgot to turn on my timer. I've got a short time, 20 minutes to do it. Here we, here we go. This is a, the visible spectrum of the universe, or the universe we live in. Science tells us that there's no such thing as solid. This table is not solid, neither is my hand. But what tells us uh, that it's solid, it's our, actually our DNA. Our DNA is the software that runs the bodies that we live in. In my opinion, we are not these bodies. We are infinite consciousness inhabiting these bodies. The, the human body and the human mind is an extremely sophisticated computer system. Trillions of times more sophisticated than anything produced by Microsoft or Apple, but it is nevertheless a computer system. It's not who we are. We wear these bodies so we can experience the wonder of this uh, third dimensional world. And this third dimensional world most of it is cut off to us. Science tells us 95% of the universe is dark matter. That's like saying, this is a dark room. Why is it dark? Because I got my eyes closed. So most of our DNA is closed off. It's our DNA that tells us how to interpret this universe. And why is it closed off? I'll get to that later. But just beware that we are living in a tiny fraction of the universe. We're living in infrared and ultraviolet. This is visible light spectrum. This is the, what they can measure with their instruments. And the rest of it is what they call dark matter. And our DNA is 95% cut off. Well, they call it junk DNA, but it's not junk. Our junk DNA is the 95% of our DNA that connects to this dark matter. It's only dark because our, our DNA is, is cut off to it. Okay, science tells us, these Russian scientists have discovered that DNA is like a biological internet. It's far superior to the artificial internet. And what's even more important, DNA can be, uh, I'll put on my glasses here for a second. DNA can be influenced and reprogrammed by words and frequencies. That's extremely important. We can actually reprogram our DNA by talking to it. DNA is the software that runs our bodies, and we can reprogram that software to do anything we want. And also it follows syntax, just like human language. It's actually the other way around. Our languages have grammar and syntax because it's built into our DNA. And it's a double helix. DNA, in addition to being software, it's also an antenna. It's a sending and receiving antenna that connects us to the matrix. 
We're all perceiving these walls as solid. We're perceiving the floor as solid, but it's not. Nothing is solid. It's only our DNA that broadcasts, it picks up the broadcast of the matrix, so we're all picking up the same illusion. Well, pictures of DNA showing that it looks like an antenna, and it is actually an antenna. Each one of us has approximately 120 billion miles of this antenna in our bodies. Now we get into what's called the kundalini, or the bodily energy. When that energy is awakened, a person may become highly intuitive and develop some psychic power such as clairvoyance, clairaudience, or healing abilities. This is from Stalking the Wild Pendulum by Itzhak Bentov. Now why do people who awaken their kundalini develop uh, psychic abilities? because they are suddenly catapulted into a situation in which they are functioning in more, one rea in more than one reality. That has happened to me. Uh, their frequency response has been broadened. Remember, everything is a function of our DNA frequency response. We are limited. We've been locked into this uh, narrow, tiny band between ultraviolet and infrared. When we're being to broaden our, our response, it's like climbing out of a box. We're in a box between infrared and ultraviolet, but as we broaden our frequency response, we can see much more of the universe. We can see that 95% of the universe, which is dark matter. And uh, possibly, according to Isaac Bentov, 25 to 30% of all schizophrenics are actually psychics. They're intuitives. They're advanced mutants of the human race, but we waste their potential by considering them to be mentally deficient. The room was humming harder. As the ceiling flew away. This is a line from a song by Procol Harum. The song is called The Whiter Shade of Pale. I put it in here because I've been in that situation when the, the ceiling flies away and the walls open up. Because remember, everything is an illusion. And as we broaden our frequency response, as we begin to escape the box of illusion, things start to change. You see more of the universe. You see more of that 95% that is formerly dark matter. Author Stuart Wilde talks about in his meditations, He's had the floor disappear, and he's standing over the infinite nothingness of the universe. It, it can be quite disconcerting if you're not, not expecting Here's a typical iceberg. 95% of it, or 85%, whatever, is underwater, and only a small percentage is above water. As coaches, I'd like to say that this iceberg represents who we are. Most of who we are is our subconscious, or it's that 95% of our DNA that has been uh, firewalled off. So which is more effective as a coach? Coaching the subconscious or coaching the 95% of the DNA that has been firewalled off or coaching above here? I would say if you want to move this iceberg, either for ourselves or for our clients, it's much more effective to coach down in this area that 95% of our DNA that is firewalled off or our subconscious mind. Here are two screenshots from the 1944 movie, uh, 30 Seconds Over Tokyo, with Van Johnson. He's a pilot who dropped bombs on Japan, and he crash landed in China. He's got the entire Japanese army looking for him, and he's lying on an operating table in a hospital under minimum anesthesia. He's getting his leg amputated. But that's all a dream. Remember, this world is a dream. This world is nothing but a frequency. So China, or the operating table, none of that exists. It's just a dream he's having, even though it seems real. And while he's having this dream, he's simultaneously having this secondary dream. He's dreaming he's in, a, in the office of a lumberyard, talking to his wife on the phone, and in the background, these workmen are cutting down this tree. So that tree is a metaphor for his leg that's being caught, cut off on the operating table. And since uh, each of us is greater and wiser than we appear to be, my question to you is, what happens if he can alter this dream? Maybe in this dream, he can tell these guys, hey, don't cut down that tree, that tree is actually my leg. Then when he wakes up on the operating table, Maybe the doctor will say, hey, we didn't have to amputate your leg. We found a better way to fix it. That's just a possibility. I'm not asking you to believe it. I'm only asking you to accept it as a possibility. Because this world is, uh, anything can happen. Wise people question everything, according to uh, Bruce Schneider. He's uh, our teacher here at the school. And I'm not asking you to question much. I'm only asking you to question the very fabric of the nature of reality. I'm asking you to question Everything we've ever been taught about the nature of existence, about this world, what it is. This world is a dream, and I'm asking you to question, question that.
Okay, here's John Lennon. He believes in everything until it's been disproved. He believes in myths, dragons, uh, uh, fairies, everything. And he says, who's to say that dreams and nightmares are not as real as the here and now? Certainly not me, because I've experienced that dreams and nightmares are as real as the here and now. And so-called scientists. But that's impossible. It violates the laws of physics. W.C. Fields. Uh, I, ha I don't have to know the law. I know the judge. So as I was saying before, this universe runs on software. That software, a large part of it is our DNA. So knowing how to uh, coach our DNA is like knowing the judge in a courtroom. All, all verdicts will be returned in your favor. Okay, this is a famous poem by Robert Frost. He took the road less traveled. Now as coaches, and especially coaches who are educated somewhat in quantum physics, what happens if we follow every road? When we come to a fork in the road, it goes left and it goes right, actually we go in both directions. But the direction we focus on, just like before I was telling you, which game I focus on, is the direction that becomes our reality. So as coaches, we can coach ourselves and coach our clients, which reality do we want to focus on? We can go in every reality, but the one we focus on becomes our and, life. Uh, what would you do if you, what would happen if you always made the correct mistakes? You have the wonderful three stooges, uh, do we treat them and how? So this is something I learned from Anthony Robbins. It's another way of what Bruce Schneider says, there are no such thing as mistakes. A classic example of the correct mistake is you're flying across the country because you've got an important conference, so you're in a hurry to get to the airport, you make a wrong turn, you get lost and you miss your plane, and then the plane crashes. So that was a mistake, you got lost and you didn't get to the airport, but it was the correct mistake because it saved your life. So I'm saying, as coaches, there might be hundreds of examples of that uh, less dramatic of correct mistakes during the course of our uh, the month or week, it's just another way of saying there are no such things. What do things. humans have in common with guinea pigs, some species of bats, and some species of monkeys? Anybody know? Okay. We are the only mammals that cannot produce vitamin C within our own bodies. Why is that? It's because scientists have discovered there are a set of 64 switches in the genomes of our DNA. They're literal on and off switches made out of proteins in our DNA. And there's a switch, specific switch, that governs the production of vitamin C. And in the human species, it's been set to the off position. Now, the Russian scientists have said our DNA responds to words and frequencies. So I'm saying it's possible, or it may be possible, to coach our own DNA so that we can produce vitamin C within our bodies. Now, wouldn't that be great? Now, what do these other 64 switches do? And are there more than 64? Maybe there are hundreds of switches that they haven't found, or that they have found and not telling us about. But what do these other switches do? I would guess that maybe one of them governs our skin color. It'd be nice. I'd like to be a black man for a week. Govern my, uh, uh, turn my DNA to, I'll be a black man for a week, then turn it back to white. And there's probably a switch in there that says uh, you're male or female. I'm sure Mark and his friends will be interested in exploring that one. Okay, is it possible we can actually coach our DNA? I say it is. In fact, I know it's possible, even though I don't know how to do it yet. Now, since a lot of you are much more advanced than I am in coaching, maybe you can figure it out and you'll teach me. Teach me how to coach our DNA so it can create any reality we want. If I've seen further than others, it's by standing on the shoulders of giants. It's one of my favorite quotes from Isaac Newton, and there are many giants that I owe this to when I'm staying here. A lot of what I'm talking about is my own personal experience, but certainly not all of it. I've read maybe two or three thousand books in my life, and in my opinion, this man here is one of the greatest authors, David Icke. I recommend his books. Human race, get off your knees, the lion sleeps no more, and infinite love is the only truth, everything else is illusion. Those are his two legs. I'd also like to compliment Stuart Wilde, uh, Louise Hay, Shakti Gawain, Anthony Robbins, and so many others. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, and that's why I'm able to impart this information to you. Are gremlins really real? Here's Captain James D. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. This is an alternate life of his. He's probably still the captain of the Enterprise, but he's having a dream that he's flying on this aircraft. And when he goes to sleep on his aircraft, he's dreaming that he's the captain of the Enterprise. But in this dream, he looks out the window and he sees this gremlin. Now, why does he see the gremlin? Oh, he's crazy. No, he's not crazy. He's actually brought into his frequency response so he can see what lies beyond infrared and ultraviolet. Remember, we are prisoners inside a box because our DNA has been tampered with. We've only got 5% of our DNA active. I say it should be 100%. Then we can see 100% of the universe. But 95% of the universe is turned off to us because our DNA has been firewalled off. 
So Captain Kirk here, he opens up part of his DNA, he looks out the window, sees a gremlin, and just like in, uh, in Star Trek, he saves the ship. In this case, it's an aircraft instead of a starship. Here's some more gremlins. Uh, here's a couple of demons, a dragon, this is an angel, some werewolves. And uh, here's some reptilians, and I've actually met some of these creatures. It's usually not very pleasant, but sometimes it is. It depends on the creatures, but you do get used to it. There's a great song by John Baldry. Uh, it still ain't easy, but I've toughened up along the way. It still ain't easy, and now I know I like it that way. So that's my story. It's not easy, but I've toughened up along and the way. These are the grays. These are very common. Uh, they're also called leprechauns, tommy knockers. Uh, little green men, little people, they're, they're in every culture throughout history. So what does that tell us? It tells us that they're probably real, it's not a fairy tale. Or it is a fairy tale, but so is this world, so there's no difference. My favorite name for these guys is the ant people. That's what they're called by the Hopi Indians. They're called the ant people because they have a hive mind, they don't have individual consciousness. Their whole uh, purpose of being is to interfere in human affairs and cause problems. So there are gremlins in psychology that think of our subconscious mind, but there are also gremlins that are other than that. Here. Here's an ancient Hopi rock carving showing the ant people. It's thousands of years old, so they've been around for a while. Here's another ancient Hopi rock carving showing more pictures of the ant people. Those graves or timing knockers or leprechauns, whatever you want to call them. Here's the Roper poll. In 1991, they did a very uh, conservative poll. They did everything they could to, to eliminate false positives. This is by uh, David M. Jacobs, Ph.D., from his book, The uh, Threat. And they came up with the conclusion that it's very likely that at least a million Americans have been contacted, have had physical contact with these grays. Most of them don't remember. It's just like if you have an automobile accident, when you wake up in the hospital, you can't remember the accident because our mind creates a barrier around it to protect us from traumatic events. So it's usually very traumatic to meet these gremlins. And so as a niche market for me as a coach, there are... Uh, most likely, a million people have contacted these graves. It might be a good niche market for Simpsons. You've got an angel on one shoulder, a devil on the other. We've been trained to ridicule these ideas by reflex action. But I'm saying, who trains you to ridicule it and why? The why is question everything. So question the fact that, that we've been trained to think this is a, a nonsense. Like the gremlin, the famous lady in red from the Matrix movies. This world is a hologram. This universe is a hologram. As a hologram, it operates by software. That software is our DNA. Now, but we are not our DNA, we are not these bodies. In my opinion, we are consciousness and we are wearing these bodies. So what happens if there's a body walking around that has no consciousness? It's pure DNA, it's just a creation of the matrix. It's a, a total illusion walking around pretending to be one of us. And I'm saying, what are the possibilities that world leaders are like that? How else could they start a war that murders millions of innocent people and, they, and then they go have breakfast and have a big smile on their face? Maybe they are gremlins without a conscience like we have, with no, no empathy. That's one thing about gremlins, they have no empathy. How dare you tell those lies about Father Flanagan? Slap! This refers to a magazine article I read about 10 years ago. It was written by a woman in her 40s who was raised an Irish Catholic. When she was 15 years old, her parish priest began to rape her. So she went home and told her dad, but it was outside of his belief system, it was outside of his preconceptions. He could not accept the possibility that the parish priest would rape his daughter, so he punished her further by slapping her. I only bring it up because this is a very similar reaction to people like me when you start telling uh, most people about gremlins. You say, oh, you're crazy. It's, it's outside of the belief system. So I'm just saying, uh, broaden your belief system and question everything. Here's a couple covers from Archie Comics. I used to love to read these when I was a kid. And I would imagine, what if these people were real? They're living in two dimensions. They're confined to a comic book. They have to progress from the front cover to the back cover. And they can't do so many things that we can do. They can't even conceive of a third dimension. So by extrapolation, we are locked into three dimensions. They're locked into two, we're locked into three. What would it look like to us if there's an entity or entities that have access to five, 10, 20, 30 dimensions? Author Stuart Wilde tells in his meditations, he's been to worlds where there are 36 dimensions. Now what can a person with 36 dimensions do in this world when we're locked into three? They would seem like a god to us, or they would seem like a demon or a gremlin. William Blake, he said the same thing uh, hundreds of years ago. There's a world in every grain of sand. We hold infinity in the palm of our hands. So I'm saying it today, he said it years ago. It's still true. Uh, 
That's a line from a German rock and roll song. It translates as, only fairy tales can provide the answers when reality fades away. So I'm telling you, uh, we've been lied to massively by the corporate media. If you read the fairy tales, uh, Grimm's fairy tales or others, they're hundreds of times more accurate portrayal of this world than anything you'll ever see on the 6 o'clock news or the New York Times. The biggest lie of all is that this 3D reality is the only reality, everything else is a fantasy. It's either all fantasy or it's all reality. They can't have it both ways, but they've lied us into it. Donald Bismarck, never accept anything in politics until it's been officially denied. He said it about politics, but I say it's true about everything. It's about science, uh, history, everything they tell us is a lie. This entire world we live in is based upon lies. And the reality is that we're living in a holographic universe. It's made out of energy. But we are, we are the only reality. You and I are the only reality. Everything else is illusion. I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. That's another way of saying the same thing. This is Mark Twain, otherwise known as Samuel Clemens. And during times of universal deceit, uh, telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act. So I'm trying to start a revolution here by telling you that this world is an illusion and we are reality and we have been lied to massively. It's the stuff that dreams are made of. Humphrey Bogart said it about the Maltese Falcon. Shakespeare said it about the world and Carly Simon wrote a song about it. But this world is the stuff that dreams are made of and we are living in it. What if at night you go to sleep? And what if while sleeping you have a dream? And what if in your dream you pick a flower? And what if when you awake the flower is still in your hand? What then? That's from Rabindranath Tagore. It's a great poem. It's just another way of illustrating that this world is nothing but a dream, and our dreams are nothing but reality. So far I ain't found a rhyme or a reason to change. I've always been crazy, but it's kept me from going insane. That's uh, Waylon Jennings singing what has been the theme song of my entire life. That's the end of my show. Thank you for attending. Have a wonderful day.